This episode is sponsored by Alberta Blue Cross and was created to help inspire discussions around the importance of taking care of your health, whether it be mental, physical, social, or even financial. We are proud to provide our Socality House team members with Alberta Blue Cross employee health benefits to help them live their best lives. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Scott Backen, and we are talking tonight about productivity and purpose. we got a good crew here tonight. Jill, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. I'm it, so excited. Are you really excited? Yeah. Like how out of a 10? I'm sweating. Like you probably don't want to be too close. Well, I'm sweating too, but I think it's hot in here. Though. It's okay. hot in here. It's the heat. I put perfume on. I love <laughs> it. We're good. You know what? It's good. You got to you gotta work it. Yeah. But um, I think we're talking tonight about the things that hold people back from actually moving forward. And this is huge for creators and it's huge for just people in general. Um, I think there's, uh, especially in our industry, creators, um, people that are freelancing, people that don't have, you know, when you don't clock into a job, you know, when you go to a job nine to five, you know, when you, when you start a job, you leave a job, it's done. But when you are a freelancer, it's kind of like if you don't start at nine, you don't have to start at nine. You can start <laughs> at 10 and then 10 turns into 11. And it's before one. you know it, you're yeah. watching the price is right. And, <laughs> price is right. and the bonus round and the showcase showdown. And, uh, <laughs> It's a, you know, you can't miss a showcase showdown. 100%. No and way. so it, and then you're like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. But this is a huge thing for creators. And then you watch some creators who are just crushing life, who are getting so much done. They're blowing up on social. They're releasing merch. They're coming out with product and they seem to have monetized. And then other people who, who should be there, but they just can't seem to get there. And I think it's a huge pain point for creators. So tonight we want to talk about productivity, mm -hmm. purpose, um, some of the things that why that happens, and then hopefully offer some solutions. Mm -hmm. Are you guys down? We, we love solutions. You solution orientated? We need the solutions. We need, <laughs> we need the solutions. We're here. We, uh, everyone loves a good solution. So um, I don't know about you, but um, I, know, I know a lot of people that I get a, a lot of questions about. How do you actually move forward in your own, you know, personal opportunities? And I don't know if, if, if you struggle with that. Yeah, I definitely struggle with that. You do? Yeah, for sure. So for con some context, I freelance. I also work a full-time job. And you I do? Previously, wow. Yeah, previously was at a marketing agency that was definitely over hours. So mm. doing it all is stressful and getting it done. I think that's, that's a big thing for creators time. is the balance, the juggle. Yeah. Working a full-time job, doing your doing your craft, and at the same time working, you know, and then having the other things on the side mm -hmm. projects. And it is actually can be a lot and that can actually probably it's you know it's like people that think they're being productive but they're not really because they're actually just doing too much of nothing right right that's mm -hmm. me yeah. so much <laughs> yeah but it's also the worst feeling to get to the end of the day and, and like look at your day yeah and go like what did i actually do yeah <laughs> Yeah, because uh, someone's <laughs> like, like it was full. Like yeah. someone's like, yeah. how was that day? And I'm like, full. And then I'm like, but nothing what did I accomplish? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it was full of nothing. It was yeah. like full of reacting to like yeah. everybody's stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the piece that, but then there's people that have the ability to like cut out all the noise, mm. have clarity, have structure. And usually they're able to say no to all of those externalities or those like so-called urgent mm -hmm. things that then enable right. them to actually get those important pieces done. Yeah. One of my pet peeves is when you, when you see people on the street and you're like, how are you? And their, their answer is always the same. Busy. Yeah. Busy. I hate that answer. Oh, he would hate me. Oh, <laughs> it's just yeah. like busy doing what? Like everyone's busy all the time. I'm just yeah. busy, busy, busy. But yet they seem like they're unproductive. I'm not saying you, um, <laughs> but it's just like, really? But it's just like, first of all, everyone's busy. Let's just yeah. accept the common denominator that everybody is busy. So when I ask you how you are, if that's your default, you know, it's like join the club. You're like, mm -hmm. we're all busy. I'm asking how you are, not like you know, like, are you good or not? <laughs> you know, but we live in this mindset of like, um, everyone thinks they're being so productive. And I think actually that's the trap is when you think you're like, it's like you said, what did I even accomplish today? Well, cause I think the problem is we've actually just switched productivity with busy. Like we've defined busy work, like created busyness, a world where yeah. busyness yeah. feels like pro feels like, so if, is as long as the ball's rolling mm. and like, we're just doing stuff, it gives us this like, I don't know. It's sort of like social media where you get that dopamine hit or that feel it's mm -hmm. like, but it's like, it's like consuming productivity content. I think I've had this, I don't know if we've talked about Probably. this, but it's like, 
you can listen to a lot of podcasts about productivity or about like self read a bunch of self help books. And it feels just enough of that, like, oh, I'm bettering myself mm. without actually having to do anything about it. It's because you're not integrating. Yeah. You're oh. Not, yeah, you're not integrating. <laughs> Drop what you're it. Learning. Drop yeah. it. Yeah. So it's like kind of when you're spinning the wheel too fast. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, if you're not actually mm-hmm. sitting with yourself and learning the lessons and making them part of your personal practice, you're never going to get on top of that productivity mm-hmm. because you're always just going to be occupying your time and space in kind of a weird kind of self sabotage way. A little bit of procrastination can be thrown in there when you're so busy. So it's about optimizing and figuring out how can I be efficient with what I'm doing today, but also not running yourself so dry that you're not getting anything done just by being busy, quote unquote. Mm. I feel like sometimes people too, like um, they don't know how it's like, like I said earlier, if you work a nine to five, you go in, you clock in, you clock out, but you are actually working on tasks. But for people, you know, freelancers, especially they don't get up there. They don't know how to build that routine into their life like they just kind of like every day is friday you know like they sleep in they go to the gym then they you know maybe go have coffee and then by then it's like one o'clock and they start working on things and then they send a couple of emails write a few things down like oh i worked really hard today <laughs> <laughs> that was a big day you know and i think i don't know if it's like their version of working hard is different than like you know of what it actually takes to move the needle i think okay there's something really important that we have to talk about, which is the 40 hour work week. Okay. Because the 40 hour work week originally was created for a household, not for every individual person. So if your metric is productivity is to finish a 40 hour work week, then that's different than productivity is hitting my goals over a project span of time of two to three weeks. You know? Okay. I find that very interesting that you said that. And maybe that is part of the problem is because people coming from a 40 hour work week, are you suggesting that we're trying to place a 40 hour work week in a freelancer life and it maybe doesn't make sense there? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Definitely. I like that. that. That's insightful. Mm -hmm. So what would your, okay, go ahead. I'll say the hard thing with, we could lean into that. Mm -hmm. And I love the sound of that, but the hard thing is, is the comparison game totally. of sitting back and yeah. watching and be like, yeah, yeah, sure. I could do 40 hours over two weeks or whatever, yeah. or set my goals and slow them down and, and, and however they fit, you know, my lifestyle or whatever my like emotional capacity can handle or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then when you look at someone on social media, who's doing like, let's say you're there in the same strain or not even social media, you look at someone next to you, like whatever. And you're like, oh, they've accomplished a lot more. Scott mentioned like at the beginning, someone who is doing like that does have their product out and merch out and doing this and, and they're capitalizing on every opportunity. Right. It's hard because then you're it just like, hard. oh, I don't know. I don't know. I like I find myself emotionally like stumped by that every single time, you know. Right. Yeah. I like what you've just said, though, because for me, I because I'm older, I did do 40 hour work weeks and I did. That's how I grew up. And so becoming a freelancer was like a whole adjustment. I feel guilty Mm -hmm. if I don't do those hours. Like I feel like I should, if I'm doing something almost of enjoyment, like if I am at the gym or somewhere, like having a coffee with a friend, I feel almost bad. Like I shouldn't be here. I should be working. Yeah, I feel that pressure. And so I find it very interesting what you've just said, because for maybe younger people who are stepping into as a freelancer there, that's their new normal. But for me, I was like, I actually feel guilty. Of course. If I don't do a lot of work. There's so much societal like weight to that, that the household or especially like in the like more patriarchal society, the man has to go and do the the work. But now we're in the situation where like men and women are both, we're working so hard to do this. And then on top, we have to take care of kids and all the things. So yeah, the guilt is there. It's like, what am I doing with my time if I'm not getting up at eight in the morning and Mm -hmm. fulfilling this? But my challenge to you guys is kind of like, Who's the smarter freelancer? Is it the person who's mm-hmm. able to monetize and create like a web course that allows them to buy time and spend time with the people that they love? Or is it the person who runs themselves maybe a bit too dry? Or is it somewhere in the middle where you're able to balance like the hours that you need to do to d- fulfill the project versus... Mm. Like, I don't know. What you, I like what that. You're shining some good lights here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, totally I'm on. like, oh, I need to do less. <laughs> yeah. That's John, kind of what I'm, the takeaway is. I've got, <laughs> I got my bracelet. This is less is more. Less remember is you, more. Remember you wore that watch that said now? 
Yeah, that's my Saturday watch. Yeah, I hate that watch. He wears this watch. It says <laughs> now. It, and it, it's just like, there's no time on it. It just says the time is now. It's, it's a bracelet, essentially. It's okay. not really a watch. It yeah. really okay. is useless, but you like it. Um, <laughs> but I'm really liking what you're saying. And the other thing that's making me think is because I, I know for me, like my freelance journey is, you know, when when we started, you know, we were doing just like growth mode, right? Like we were just, everything was just content, 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 content. It was easy to post every day and create all this work and do all this stuff because it was fun. But the moment it became like you started getting paid for it and monetizing, it became work because all of a sudden now you've got to meet deadlines and you've got briefs from clients and you've got to fulfill certain things. And they're, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden you're like, now you've got all these responsibilities of actually, it went from like fun and, and I feel like almost I was a little bit even more productive when I was having a blast without pressure. But then when the pressure comes, you're like, oh, man, this has moved now into work. I don't know if that could be. A Do you think that's because you're doing things now that you don't want to be doing? Like because it's so like you start as a creator yeah. and you're like, oh, I got into this because I wanted to make yeah. videos or take photos or maybe you're an artist and it's like paint or do what, whatever creative thing that got, got you into it. But then in order to make it a business or a job, then you're like, oh, shoot. But then I got to like invoice people and mm -hmm. market myself and do all these other things that maybe have nothing to do with the art or the creative totally. piece in the middle. And so then it starts to become the content I love work. sharing the most is the content that has no pressure behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's just like I created this. It's fun. I like it. I'm just putting it out there. You know, versus I obviously enjoy stuff for brands, but um, there's more pressure attached. And I think maybe exactly that could be one of the reasons because um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like less of a lift in a way. It is less of a lift. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I feel like the the crazy thing about like the productive or productivity thing is like what you're talking about when you start getting paid for something is <clears throat> sometimes I think of it like a train line, like where you're you, you look at the people that really make it in life. Like, let's say we're we're talking about a. A, a Banksy or whatever, like someone mm -hmm. who's made it in art, who's like a like the goat, super whatever. established, yeah. And th you hear these stories when they tell her, and they're like, "Oh, I just like I." We just talked about Ed Sheeran before we started, and it's like, "Oh, he was homeless for four years." So that means he wanted it more than most people. Mm -hmm. Like this guy wanted it; he was gonna grind. Like he was gonna, whether it meant he was grinding or he was doing whatever, but he held on. Whereas, like, how many of the people that were, I mean, he he's amazing, but how many people were the same like? Level, talent level, yeah. or whatever, but would settled for the getting paid two thousand dollars every Friday to play at their local bar. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And then, he, but he just pushed further and what pushed further. But then the hard thing is, is the percentage of people, you know, is less than or the same as getting into the NBA or whatever. It's so hard. So then you're like, at what level are we satisfied? So I think the question comes back to what drives us, like in the, because really, if it what drives us is like, how how do I do this and for the rest of my life? Yeah, that's awesome. But at what level, like, you know, is it, are we happy with $5,000 a month or are we happy with $0 a month mm -hmm. we get to do what we love yeah. or whatever? I don't mm -hmm. know. And I think this is one thing that people get hung up on when it does come to being productive in their own life is it's easier to love the idea of something, but it's much harder to put the work in. Mm -hmm. Right. Like mm -hmm. it's easy to sit here and go, I'm going to do A, B, C and I'm going to do it. And then they look at it and go, oh my gosh, it means I'm going to do all this work. It, uh, you know what I mean? Like it is actually harder to build. It's, you know, you got to go create, you got to invest into things. And then they realize this is just work. Right. And it's almost easier to take the easier way out and find a job where you do shut off your brain and totally. just do clock in, clock out versus then to put yourself on the line right. and be like, I got to like grind. And you talk about Ed Sheeran. And I think there's a difference of people that go, I see it. I want it. I'm doing whatever it takes to become that. But then other people go, oh, that's too much. I have to learn too much. I have to learn this or figure that out. And that's too hard. And I think one thing with productivity that holds people back is they love the idea. Like I've met these people before where you meet them and they tell you their idea and they've got an idea. And then you meet them a year later and they're still got talking about the idea, but they haven't done anything right. with it. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, I do. I feel like I need to process a little bit. Let me continue <laughs> a second. Yeah. I was just like, yes. Take it in, take it in. I kind of like how you did to me. Yeah. I'm just like, I need to take that <laughs> in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think to speak to yeah. you and the people you are talking about, like the, there isn't anything wrong with the people that just want to go. There for, isn't no, at and, all. And, and, and I don't want to make anybody no. feel bad that's listening to awesome. this. If you, and want it, if, if, you, if you can actually be yeah. genuinely happy, yeah. happy 
work for a job that gives your family great benefits. Yeah. You get this nice stuff and you live for the weekends. And then that's create, awesome. create on your own time. I mean, I've been doing that f- like a lot in the sense of working on building what we're trying to build with mm-hmm. Socality. And then so much of my creativity over the last couple of years has been just play and fun because I mm-hmm. haven't had the time to like, you know, push that from a commercial side because I literally would have zero mm-hmm. bandwidth, you know, right, like right. zero bandwidth to do both. Yeah. Has that um, been like a conscious decision for you or has that something been like very organic? I think it's I just, I think it's comes back to that capacity. Like just yeah. knowing like I can only really do, mm-hmm. like if I wanted to f- go full bore into the commercial side, right. that that would take more of me than I could give up to build yeah. this or to do, you know, um, but it's funny that you mentioned like the, that you set the whole conversation up with like productivity and purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, Jared, who's my roommate, like he gave me this book um, for my birthday um, by Donald Miller, who's a, who's, was kind of memoirist. Now he's doing more business books. And um, he wrote this book recently called Hero on a Mission. And it's all this whole kind of that finding your kind of connecting purpose into the practical like planning aspect of your life. And he kind of touches on a couple core pieces. And I thought it was interesting in the context of this conversation, because so much, I think where we get hung up is when we tackle a day or a week or a month, but we're not actually, we've kind of lost sight of even where we're going, you know, like Mm -hmm. you, you know, you mentioned it's like the person that's like, Oh, I got this idea. But if it's just floating there and it's not connected to their identity or their like the, mm. the decision within their identity, James Clear and he's like Atomic Habits, he talks about identity being so vital to our like habit formation. Like you run because you decide you're a runner, not mm. because you want to run a marathon. Wow. Like like you you get up, you know, you go and make art because you decide you're an artist, you mm-hmm. know, and then that drives your right. You know, it's like you skateboard because you're like, what does a skateboarder do? They skateboard. So right. if you're a skateboarder, yeah, you know, <laughs> sleep in, yeah, yeah. slack off, yeah, but, exactly. yeah, eat junk food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like coming back, I think he just brings back, you know, really the whole like thesis or idea of the book comes back to just a couple practical tools. And he really pushes people into using a daily planner, like, pl- like, but informing that daily planner mm. with the time you've put into setting a few like one year, five year kind of mm-hmm. 10 year mm-hmm. yeah. goals or bigger picture vision for yourself, like in some of those core areas of your life mm-hmm. and then letting that inform the, the daily let it's that inform. Yeah. You know, like, so yeah. saying who, who am I like, who, who am I trying to be? What do yeah. I want? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In these different aspects of life. And I, I know personally, like when I get the most lost or, you know, in the weeds is when I've kind of been outside of the clarity there. You know, mm-hmm. I might still have a foggy view of what that big picture looks like, but I've let maybe way too many big ideas or too many things or too many identities kind of all land on, you know, land on me yeah. at once. I um, think you bring up a good point. And um, I posted something about, you know, TikTok today because I... You know, I've been growing on TikTok and someone wrote back to me. They Humble said, brag. Well, <laughs> no, but they said, but they said consistency is key. Yeah, and I right. thought, I thought about that for a moment. I'm like, actually, that's one reason. If you're in it, you're in it. Yeah. Like I post constantly on the platform. So I'm giving something f- for people to follow, which means naturally there's going to be growth there mm-hmm. because I'm active on the platform. And I went to a dinner one time, like this kind of media influencer dinner. And I went around the table and just like, oh, what do you do? And I'm a blogger, but I'm taking six months off. What do you do? I'm a blogger, but I haven't done it in a year. And I'm, I'm a blogger and I'm taking I'm a break. I'm like, is anybody here a blogger? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're all bloggers, but you're not actually doing it. And the, can, it, it's like it's sometimes you almost believe a lie that you are something. You're not actually doing it. What makes you a blogger, just like you pointed out, is that you blog. Yeah. Right. And then if you blog on a consistent basis, because that's what you love to do, mm-hmm. you're going to grow because you're understanding that you're using yeah. the platform to share your voice. You've got something to say and people will mm-hmm. identify that you are in that niche and they will follow you for it yeah. but you have to give something having a website with a url and a domain does not make you a blogger, not make you, a blogger. Yeah. No. you know the fact yeah. and you can't you know what i mean you're either a blogger or you're not like if you're getting paid for it and you're doing actively then you're a blogger and i think part of the problem is is consistency yeah. is people going i'm gonna get in the game 
on, in this sphere. You can't do it all, but I'm going to get on this in this game and do it consistently mm. and get known for this, mm -hmm. you know? And I, th I think at the same time, doing it because you want to do it. It's the authenticity. Yeah. It's the authenticity. So that's, the, that's the whole thing is like you need to peel back the layers. There's so many motives for us to chase after these big like milestone mm -hmm. moments. But at the end of the day, if you're outside of your authenticity, then the pathways aren't just going to open. They're not going to. And you will lose steam. You will. Mm -hmm. you, and people can read that. You will lose steam because yeah. some people said, like, I know I could make a lot of money if I was a real estate agent. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, uh, I'm back that. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I could sell houses, but I'm thinking like, do I really want to be like showing people a house on a Saturday, it's Sunday? Not no. no, It's, it's not, not me. You. I could do yeah. it, but yeah. I would not be passionate. Yeah. I would be drained. I would not feel I was living in my purpose. Yeah. And I would feel at the end of the day, like it's just not authentic to me. And so there's a mm -hmm. lot. So I ask people, you could do that. But is that what you want to do? Like, do you really want to do that? Yeah, you could even make a lot of money doing that. But is it what you want to do? Because at the end of the day, you got to enjoy your life. So I think another mm -hmm. thing that holds people back is they're not really being true to their authentic self. Yeah, for sure. I feel like the Atomic Habits book is such a great way to think of something like a work back plan for productivity. Just like what is your what is your mission? What is your mm -hmm. values? Why are what are the things that drive you? What is going to get you out the door? Because if you are like, yeah doing something maybe you know sometimes there's things that push us like growing on instagram that could be really fun or tiktok but if actually you're just someone who wants to do campaign work mm -hmm. like quality over quantity then you're gonna burn out really hard and so i feel like it's yeah finding those those th like four things like for me my four pillar words are creative creativity depth spirituality and freedom and anything outside of that does not motivate does not motivate me. So those words have become my compass. Mm -hmm. And with that, I kind of have like a work back plan. How did you sense. define that for you? So I came to those words through journaling. I think journaling is such a really good way to get to know yourself, mm -hmm. um, especially when there's just so much noise in the room all the time. Um, but creativity, like I just was born an artist. I've always thought that way. I've always created that way. Like my child self was like coding for fun. So like when you look back at your, your little self, like what were you doing? That's where I got creativity. Spirituality is just a part of my upbringing. And like, that's just who I am depth is like how I present myself in the world. I'm, I'm never going to be someone who just takes life super like lighthearted, like mm -hmm. a little bit, but I'm a deep person and I know that about myself. So my, my work reflects that. And then freedom is just like, okay, that is the motivator for me to keep going towards, mm -hmm. um, creating a life for myself that gives me the ability to be around people, to be in purpose, but also, um, to not burn out, mm -hmm. which, and like, that's the other thing too, about productivity is like for me, Someone who works a full-time job has worked like at an agency before and now does freelance on the side of a full-time job. There is like productivity for me. It's not the same as like waking up at like a freelancer and trying to like start my day and struggling with that. It's that like, if I don't do my art form, I feel depleted. Right. Like that it is what gives me energy. Mm, so right. I have to find some, some way to do that. Do you feel like... Um journaling has made you more productive yeah I actually think that like any type of journaling or therapy work can be the clarity piece that keeps you on the path towards what feels the that that is the right path for you I think mm. um journaling for me really just takes away the things that get in the way from what I'm supposed to do is it a daily thing like I just want to dive into your process of it mm -hmm. is for it a me, daily like thing that at the same time yeah. or at a certain a lot of the time like how do you know mm. What does that look like for you? So, okay, actually, journaling for me, I'm a very fast person. Okay. You're a fast person. I speak fast, everything. Um, I'm a voice memo journalist. So, like, I don't actually write down. Really? Very cool. I don't, yeah, I mm. pull out that, my phone. That's true because yeah. I can't, my handwriting is atrocious because oh, I, I can't write as fast as I think. I love to go on walks and mm. talk talk to myself. Wow. So I'll take out my my uh, my phone and I'll hit record and I will just like process my day. And mm. I think that to me brings me the clarity because it makes like whatever is going around, whatever gunk's happening in like my vicinity it becomes a tangible thing. And it allows me to like get clear. Um, and then from there, I like to do meditation work. So that really, really helps me too to keep 
keep with that. Do you listen to your voice memos back after? I don't. You I delete should. Them? No, Do you delete I, they're them? all on my phone. So it, it just years. it's more the verbal processing it's that allows you to actually like gather and mm-hmm. organize. Yeah. And, oh. It's so been the best. And if you do it while walking, you're in this zone called the theta zone because you're in autopilot. So okay. it actually allows you to pull up a lot of subconscious stuff. So there's a lot of like neuroscience involved with it. It's very it's very effective. Is it like the same thing as when you're driving and looking out the window and it's like kind of like mm-hmm. mesmerizing? So then you end mm-hmm. up opening up more when you're staring mm-hmm. at a fire. Yeah. If you ever, like, notice, like, if you go to a float tank or in, you're having a bath or in the car driving and you just have these, like, memories pop yeah. up, it's usually because you're in a state of frequency where your subconscious is, like, can bubble to the top. Wow. Versus if you're always, like, in conversations and being super productive and working and, like, not in that state of, mm-hmm. like, autopilot, mm-hmm. you actually don't actually, like, access your subconscious, though we're always, like, putting stuff down into right. it. Um, so, so would you say for our listeners that are, or viewers that are, trying to figure out what motivates me yeah. so they can actually build out schedules mm-hmm. or structures or, or, or whatever it mm-hmm. looks like. Would you say these, like these are practices that have yeah. helped you get there? For sure. I think too, like what, like what I was saying earlier, look back at yourself as a child and what were you doing as a child? Like for me, mm-hmm. I was coding. That was super fun. I like Neopets. Everybody mm-hmm. like back in my era was like on Neopets. And so that for me is like, like a Tamagotchi. No, it's Neopets is like this website where like everybody had a page and then you had to like HTML and you like, I don't know, it's kind of fun. And so for me that like picking up a camera, painting, those were all things that I did as a kid. And ironically, those are like very much in line with what I'm Mm, meant to do. That's very interesting. Do you ever struggle with the, especially now being like an adult, like the, the struggle with like, oh, what I do has to make money. Yeah. Yeah, I do. But to a degree, I guess my journey as a photographer, video designer, like all of those things luckily (laughs) can make me money. Um, I think the the real problem that I find is the commodification of my creativity. Um, Does everything I have to do, does it have to make money? Well, I have to survive. So in a way, yeah. But at the end of the day, too, like some of the more grandiose, the better, the things that I really want to do would be things that um, maybe don't, they're not like brand partnerships or, but, but they make you come alive though. They make so they like, alive. so they serve yeah. your, your future and your holistic mm-hmm. life anyways. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. What about you? What are your thoughts on that? I struggle with it a lot, especially as yeah. I get older and I talk to me and my wife talk about starting a family and things like that. And I think, Oh man, like I really struggle with how to, what do I do make money? Or sorry, <laughs> but how do I like, yeah. <laughs> how do I make money? Yeah, how do I make money though? No. Really? Cause it's like, well, I cut hair for a living. Oh, That's, yeah. I make my bread and butter there. But then yeah. I got all these other things. I'm like, oh, I can make quick money here and there. But mm-hmm. then I love skateboarding. Like we mentioned earlier and literally I try to do TikTok and YouTube and these other things. And I, as you're talking about pillars, I was like trying to think, what are mine? And like, and I was like, humor would probably be like mm-hmm. a big thing. Cause that makes me like, I, mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. But then I a couple uh, yesterday, I was having a hard day. It was Sunday yesterday. I was Why did hard... you call me? No, it wasn't a hard day like that. It was oh. like, but I turned to my wife and I said, I have to go skateboarding. Like yeah. I, and and I and I took my phone and my tripod with me because I was like, well, I'm going. I need to create some content. And I got there and I was like, I just want to have fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And I put my phone and my stuff in the bag. And then at the end, I still felt guilty. I felt great because I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I got it out. Mm-hmm. I didn't hurt myself, which I always hurt myself. And then like I just had a good session. But then at the end, I, I still felt guilty because I, I did the right thing by just having fun. Mm-hmm. But I think I've trained myself and my subconscious to be like, as an adult, I'm not allowed to do this. Mm. Unless I've worked a, like a 40-hour week or I have made a really you know great amount of money like this month or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I've checked mm-hmm. my boxes. I think some of my goals are unhealthy in that mm-hmm. way. Whereas what you're talking about, you've you've – reeled it all the way back to the rawness and the honesty of who is Jill Mm -hmm. to really be like, okay, like the boxes that you're checking are healthy ones, both in the way, yes, I need to make money, but also what keeps me alive and happy, Mm -hmm. you know, especially in the winters when it's cold and it sucks. It's the finding the balance of working hard and playing hard. Right. Because if you can play hard then, and you can work hard, then you're going to have a really like well-balanced life. Like that's going to feel really good for you. But the reality of the situation is there's more cards on the table than just, okay, we're working and then we're course, playing. Yeah. We have a family and we're thinking of adding right. to the family and everything. Right. And it's hard in a capitalist yeah. environment though, like in yeah. Western culture, because you say, well, I like nice stuff. <laughs> <You> <laughs> we're know? actually just and talking I travel. about boundaries, right? 
Foundation oh, like, oh, that's what we're talking about. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we're like, okay, well, how can we commodify what we're doing? It's especially for a service provider. Like, you're a service provider. Right. Photographers are service providers. We're not necessarily selling products. Products can be a really great way to, like, have that inc- income coming in. But, like... I lost it. No, but I like what you said. <laughs> I, I like it. what you said it's about. Um, You're this excited. Is, this is one thing I've taken away from. I've taken a lot away, but uh, mm-hmm. about your productivity is sometimes when you're in the noise, it's hard to be productive because you just are in a, 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 a rat race. Mm-hmm. But for you, what I heard from you is that you came, you come out of the noise mm-hmm. when you journal mm-hmm. and you process and you you put yourself into that yeah. position of what are those pillars that actually move you forward and then you go do the work. Mm-hmm. And I think partly, and maybe it's been in my brain just because I'm older and I grew up with this and my parents even more so, is that's all you do is work. Like you work, work, right. work, 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 right. work, and you can work from home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? But like that's what you do is you work mm-hmm. and then you treat yourself every now and then. Like the growing up, it was like you'd go on a two-week vacation and that was it and then you get back to work. But what I hear you saying is in order for you really need to be productive and this is maybe something where we've got hung up is you've got to come out of the noise. You've got to come yeah. out of the noise and the rat race and the, even the, the comparison because I've seen people do this and someone's gone YouTube and they blow up and they go, I got to YouTube do YouTube. And I got, but it's like, is that, are you meant to be doing that right now? Mm-hmm. Like, is that your thing? Like yeah. you know, some people catch momentum and they catch steam in a season, but just because they did it doesn't mean you have to actively be hitting there yeah and that's like with tiktok too right like from what i've heard and i'm not tiktok famous i have like i'm capped at like 200 views on every <laughs> video and it's like i gotta start over from you. Okay, start over you. start a new so, account <laughs> but like people who make it and they have that one viral vi- video it's yeah. like okay how do i keep this up and you just have to yeah. keep going and going and actually ironically beauty con a couple years ago like beauty con was a huge thing and there was a lot of like youtubers and stuff and lots of meetups people would come from all over the world to come see these people and nowadays we have tiktok influencers at these mm-hmm. beauty cons or beauty con and basically what's happened is because these people are like viral for a second nobody has created a personal relationship with those creators mm-hmm. and so there are no meetups like the influencers are going to beauty con and there's like no lines of people there Oh, because wow. like and they're like you know you're chasing this fame and it's, it's like different a million followers that yeah. they gained in like three and months it, yeah <laughs> or like four right. months so then everyone the so the brands are all like come out but they haven't invested but the there's years no, that other people yeah. have to actually build a connection to an audience yeah like you don't know the person yeah you, well, it's like a bite size so it's a little different but like mm-hmm. i feel like coming back to boundaries which was mm-hmm. like what i was talking about it is about like the breathing space it's like with a plant when you water it and then you let it air dry so it can actually grow and breathe if we're like constantly just watering watering and watering we're just gonna kill it kill it we're just gonna kill it yeah Hmm. so yeah so when we're talking about productivity like you really are talking about reeling it all the way back resetting the goals resetting the the structure because i know for me like i have my hand in many different things and part of that is because my ADHD and I have to like, right. I, I know that yeah. if I just, if I only cut hair all day long, I would die inside. That's fair. And so I have to do these other things. Mm-hmm. But then, but then because I have so many options, sometimes I wake up and I'm either overwhelmed with the options mm-hmm. or I lean too much into what do I feel like doing today? Right. Even though knowing I'm like, I have, you know, a, a color I have to do tomorrow and I have to like research, like, you know, whatever, like color yeah. formation or I have a podcast I'm prepping for or whatever you know, or I have like a sermon to preach or whatever. It's like these different things. And then it's like, oh, if I, <laughs> if I, but I don't feel like doing it. I just want to go make TikTok videos or whatever. I find it tough. I know for me, the only, like, I have a really hard time structuring. My wife works out six yeah. days, seven days a week. She asked me the other day, she's like, would you rather be, f- sorry, would you rather be overweight or would you, or, or do you want to just put in the work now before you get there kind of thing? And again, she didn't say that because I'm fat. She said that because <laughs> she said that because I was complaining. I was like, I'm gaining weight because I'm eating too much fast food. <laughs> and she's just like, Well, do something now. Yeah. yeah. And right. I said, yeah. and I said, I hate the gym almost as much as. Do you hate it for okay. real? I yeah. thought you liked it. No, almost as much as I don't care about being overweight. So I was like, right. It's sometimes some days I'm like I just would rather. Do you want to know the secret to getting fit? Tell me. <laughs> Dancing. You do some. You could be TikTok really. famous. Just dance. If you do something that you love, like skateboarding, right. you lose weight. 
right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's cardio. But it snows gotta, here six months. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. So dancing, yeah. you do that inside. <laughs> I could do that. You yeah, could yeah, dance. Yeah, yeah. I could. You crumb. gotta find something that like brings you joy. No, that's you, true. And that's the thing. Yeah, that's what that's what I was having to do too. Like, I mean, I don't have the, like we were talking about my, I have the opposite problem. I can't right. gain weight. Right. Um, but I do think we all need to be active, and I was finding it hard to just get out even to the gym. And it, for me, it had to come back to just did a lot of sports as a kid. Right. And I just started like swimming again and doing stuff like that and finding like the thought of just going to the gym and lifting weights right. was not exciting right? because I didn't have like some motive specific motivator. Right. But <coughs> getting out to do something, you know, like you mentioned the skating and like, I think it has to be fun. Like, I think we need to make choices and, and do things first to like mm-hmm. actually create some enjoyment and like, and then the discipline gets easier. Right. So totally. like sometimes I think it takes the, the fun piece and then you stack the, bit of discipline how, how long do they say it takes to build a habit it's like 30 days 30 days 30 days consistently yeah and if you build a habit for 30 days then you move on to the next habit and develop it but you got to be consistent Cons- once again we're talking about consistency consistency right. is the key to developing a habit and you know it is you can't just start something and stop it the next day you have to keep going i do think going back to this i think we have to find a balance in between you know the whole like coming out of the noise but at the same time building out a healthy structure Mm -hmm. for you to function. And I do think Mm -hmm. for me, I'm a routine individual. I love my routine. I love getting up at a certain time. I love having my coffee in the morning. I love eating the same thing every day. Like I like, I could eat the same food every single day of my life. Like, and as if you could eat Chick-fil-A, I feel like, no, we're that way. We were in one week, one (laughs) week. And that was not normal. He's over it now. I'm done. I literally could eat the same (laughs) breakfast, same lunch and same dinner every night. I don't eat it fancy. I don't eat sauces. I don't eat spices. Just give it to me straight. Hey, no. <laughs> I'm really? very boring and regimed well that way. I'm routined. Oh. But but I do think that I personally function really well with structure. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I like getting up at a certain time, doing my thing, work, starting work, and then finishing work, and then knowing that I, I feel like I'm done for the day. As Whereas if I lived in, in just like an... I don't know if I could just to be like a task is done. I feel like I would live in this kind of chaos right. of like... Things are always like a to do list is always swirling over my head. That's how I would feel. But I do believe that we need to find a balance of coming out of the noise, processing your thoughts, giving yourself freedom to enjoy things, but at the same time putting the work in. Because I do think you do see advancement in your life in things when you do the work. Right. And at the same time, I think when as we're talking about this, what's key? What? Why do people hit the wall? I think that's you know one of the things we're trying to solve here is why are people hitting the wall when they've got all this vision and ideas? And I think part of the problem is people don't know where to start. And I think you have to identify that it's okay just to start somewhere. Yeah. Right. Starting somewhere. I remember it was Steve Harvey, you know, mm-hmm. family feud host. <laughs> so he wrote, he wrote a book and they said, what's your secret to success? And he says, just jump. He's like, mm-hmm. if you wait forever for the plan and everything to fall into place, you'll never do it. Sometimes you just have to activate. And I think one of the keys to going forward is just start something. And you don't have to start at all. Maybe it's TikTok. Maybe it's YouTube. Maybe it's the gym. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe it's a blog. Just start and get consistent on it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. hit daily. Hit daily and just be like boom, 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 boom. And and be passionate about it if it's your thing. Just mm-hmm. Do it because you want to do it. And then if it grows into something and then it's like your last man standing, all of a sudden it's like these people that are really in these spheres, it's because they just did it and did it long enough. It's true. You know, it's true. I think that can be very overwhelming for someone. Who it's completely needs overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So like for me, and this is probably where we're going to nerd out because I love productivity. Like, like I love like agendas and everything. I come from a marketing background. Like I've said like five times on this podcast, but like literally with, if you work for an employer, it, it's going to be different, right? Like they yeah. tell you a deadline, you're going to do it. You're going right. to hit it. Okay. So like you have to become your own employer. You have to like, you know, Get, set it and forget it is my mantra. It's like you put it down in the board, you set it, you forget it, you do it when it pops up. And that's just how it rolls. But if I don't, if I didn't work for employers that had me doing that, I don't know if I would have the mm. capacity that I've mm. learned from that. Um, it might just be working with other freelancers and getting accountability and being really like extreme about it or setting specific goals, like one week goals, a month goal, 
This is the month I'm going to do my website. This is the month that I'm going to do TikTok and see how it goes. Give yourself short opportunities so that it's not overwhelming. Like make it fun. Gamify your life. Make it fun. Give yourself tiny. Gamify your life. Like Gamify your life. Gamify your life. Come on, let's go. One Reward calls. yourself. You can have your fast food. <laughs> sure, why not? Chick-fil-A. No, I, that is powerful though. Like creating a creating a specific reward or a like milestone for yourself to say, hey, I'm when I hit this, I'm mm-hmm. going to do this. Or you've been planning that trip. Oh, like finish. I'm going to knock off 30 episodes of my podcast. And then like, mm-hmm. then I can book that flight or then I can do that. Thing right. Because that. people get distracted too easy. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, oh, I'll do two podcasts. Oh, I'm going, going away. And I'll get back to that when I get back. Because momentum is incredibly hard to regain. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things is once you have momentum with something, you do want to ride that wave. When Julie, you're hitting on something, which is just that when your account, like when you have an employer, you have external accountability. Yeah. But internal accountability is really hard. It's the hardest. It's the hardest. Like I, and like I struggle with that so much in the sense that I will, and even just on not even like employer type things, because we're working for ourselves right now, but Mm -hmm. like anyone else's needs, like someone asks me for something and prioritizing their ask or that draw versus your your art or your mm-hmm. the or like your self care. Mm-hmm. Like even sometimes it's like I find myself prioritizing that random request from whoever who You're you know, bad for that. Totally. But it's it's a boundary thing and it's also related to that inner accountability to say like and for me I found if I don't block use my calendar and take like, you know, I I've you know, I use like a daily planner and like if I don't take the time the day before or first thing in the morning or like throughout the week and actually like lock down my time, I will give it up to somebody else without fail. Like, mm-hmm. and so it's still a struggle. I, I would say I still wrestle with that probably week in, week out. Um, but I know it's like, you know, your enemy a little bit. Like, so I'm finding that successful weeks for me look like I protected my the you know that because you're t- you're quick to give your time away because Absolutely. you want to sincerely help people. Yeah. So when I say you're bad for that, what I mean is that no, you totally you, you care you, you yeah. care about people yeah. to the point where you will put things aside and then it bottlenecks on you and buries you because you've got all these tasks mm-hmm. to do and then you you're f- finding yourself behind. But it's because mm-hmm. you were putting people, you know. But it also is poor boundaries on me if I if I own boundaries. it right. Yeah. No, honestly, because yep. because it's and it's. You know, so it's that fine line of that can be an excuse too, right? Like it, you can, you can literally go through life and I've caught myself doing that where you're making everybody else the problem. Mm. Oh, everyone wants stuff for me. Mm. Oh man, like all these asks, all these requests, but who's saying yes, who's not protecting their time? You know, like we're so good sometimes at playing the victim and, and the, you know, and oh, it's all like. You know, but the buck does really stop with us. You right, know, at right, the end right. of the day, like we ultimately chose every single thing, pretty much we, the, even the jobs we take, That's right? True. Like the jobs right. we stay in, the friends we like chose to hang you out created with. created this, this crazy, you know, like, yeah. and I'm not saying there aren't scenarios absolutely where, where for a lot of people there's, there's some situations, I would say though pretty limited where you don't have a choice or right. you get stuck in a very difficult right. scenario, but like 99% of the time or pick a percentage, you know, we have full control of our time, our decisions and what we choose to do. Right. And that's the hard challenge. I, I wrestle with a lot is when I get into that, like blame, I'm putting it all on all of the requests when really it's just poor boundaries on my part to mm. sit down and take the time to, say what's important Mm -hmm. block the time to do it and then follow through it sounds like everyone here needs a project manager we need Uh, (laughs) we're we're creators though we're creators creators it is hard when you're a creator i define that balance between being administrative and being creative at the same time because the the administration and the project manager is not the sexy stuff Mm -hmm. like it's not the like 90 percent of what we do is all in the admin but it's not the fun stuff it's not the cool stuff it's the cool stuff to hit post it's the cool (laughs) stuff to like re you know comment back and or or to put your work out there that's the cool stuff but like the grind of like all the emails and the briefs and getting it right and the 
Th- that's not the cool stuff. And that's why I think that creators struggle is I'm just being honest. <laughs> okay. It's so funny for me because everybody said this my entire life, yeah. but I love the project management. You love stuff. it? Well, we need you. Are so, you free? Yeah. No, honestly, like, <laughs> I think I just recently realized you I love it. Like I, you love no, the admin. I really like it. You like it. And you guys it's have to because hire of the we tool. need to. Yeah. Do you have a resume? <laughs> <laughs> it's because I use HoneyBook and I'm obsessed with it. And I love all it's the a HoneyBook plug. HoneyBook plug. Like, this podcast <laughs> is brought to you by HoneyBook. <laughs> <laughs> HoneyBook, send us the I check. Love, okay, this is how I think. Of <laughs> this happens like setting. every two episodes. We like randomly plug uh, like something, <laughs> something sorry. random. I know it's fine. You can bleep it out. We need HoneyBook. This is what's the thing. No, no, no. What is I don't even know what HoneyBook okay, is. Okay, so this, is. is. <laughs> this is how I see project yeah. management and like setting up your business is like you do it once and that's done. Like, and yeah. then you refresh it in a year. Absolutely. So there's like a list of tasks that everybody's going to do, like setting up your website, getting some email templates going, getting your contracts done. Once you're done those things, you just pop them out. Like yeah. this is HoneyBook? It's kind of fun. No, 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 so HoneyBook, I guess it's just like this um, oh, okay, project management yeah. software for okay. photographers. Oh. But it automates your emails between your clients to you and it puts them in a pipeline and then you can upload your contracts and your invoices and it just automates the whole back end. Nice. So it's just super, super fun. So like that to me is exciting because mm-hmm. I know that if I can get on top of project management, I can get on top of my life and I can have more free time. That mm-hmm. is good. It's, no, you're bang it's on. fun. Mm-hmm. Like to me, it's fun. See, but, but also, you find it fun. Creators don't find it fun, but um, it is actually <laughs> so useful. It's actually That's just, the you dichotomy. You have to gamify. Yeah. You have to make You guys it love this gamification. You have to. I yeah. think it's, I think usually, and that's why I, I've been on this trend where like anybody who's wanted to start something, my advice is always like, get your structures done first. Right. Like, totally. you know, like, and I think it, cause get your system in place, like take the time, talk to some people, like, because too often I think it's so hard to do it when you're mid sprint. You know, like when you're halfway through to try. Like how hard was it for you guys to impl- implement it into Socality after uh, the fact, right? We're still we're struggling. We're still doing right? it. <laughs> yeah, like, no, and then, like, that's what I mean. Like, we're, like, yeah. eight years into this thing, right. and I'm still building structures that should be there. Right. Like, you know, but it's because you're, it's, and that's just practically speaking, it's so hard to do when you're doing something else or you're right. juggling multiple you're doing things 10 or you're, things, yeah. you it's, know, it's also hard to do when you don't put yourself in environments where people have gone ahead up before you and have totally. already done it. Like if you're just like trying to figure out how to build a website, maybe you should outsource that. Absolutely. Um, maybe like for me knowing a good project management system that came from me working at an agency. So I know you're just like, like, I'm like, replicate. I don't have to like mm-hmm. make that up myself. That's a good point. You know, like if I were to be here every day, I would be so expanded by everybody here because everyone is a business owner pretty much that walks in the door. They're all mm-hmm. excited about coming to Socality and working on whatever they're doing here. But if I were to spend time here, I would like accelerate my mentorship with those people by so much and have so many skills that the back end of my business would, it would get be faster Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you just organically have conversations Mm -hmm. that optimize yourself in those situations. And I think that's another problem though too, is we are social people. Like, are you an extrovert? Yeah. See, I'm an extrovert. So I love being, you are too. Yeah. Um, I, uh, are you an extrovert? Yeah. Oh, we're all extroverts. Is nobody here introverted? I mean, I like spending time alone, but like, yeah, I need to spend time but I like I the like first forty five minutes of the day. I'm introverted. Don't yeah. talk to me. But I'm, are you? I'm good. you oh, see, I'm in oh, yeah. morning. I'm ready to go. Like, let's be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to be friends from let's the moment I wake friends. up to the moment I go to sleep. There's a reason why when we went to California, I woke up before you guys and I spent my time alone. Yeah, you were alone. I'm like, who's ready to party? Because I wanted to be in a good mood by the time you yeah. guys saw me. That's yeah. why <laughs> I'm in a good mood right away. But um, I I feel like that's the other problem too is when you're you're social. And you want to hang out with people, and the, when you're working too, um, it 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 means sometimes removing yourself from those things that do refresh you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, if people view work as things that are not exciting, they tend to put it off. You know, where they're like, "I'll get to it later" because I'm having coffee with friends or I'm, you know, hanging out. Well, I'm bad for that for sure. You know, and so it's yeah. hard. It's hard yeah. because you're literally. I think what we're trying to find here is a so- identify the problem, but the solutions. Right. I think you know our structures. And also acknowledging building systems as maybe not sexy as it is, how imperative it is to going forward, Mm -hmm. how important it is, and to have those other people in your life that balance you out. I was going to say one of the things that Jill said earlier was surrounding yourself with the right people. Mm -hmm. Right. I would say being around you guys motivates me to be like, oh, like it it doesn't just like motivate me to be like, oh, I, I should do it, but it makes it more tangible by just being around you, you know? 
being around better skateboarders. Mm-hmm. One, and actually, ones who are laughing while they're skateboarding makes me want to do it more. Right. You know, being around whatever it might be, people who are building business or people who are cooking good food or yeah, whatever yeah. it is, it makes me want to do that more. Right. And so I think if we can find our community that is passionate about it and it and isn't like just sharing in the pity party, because right. I've often found myself those people, you find the people in the corner that are like, why am I here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, heck yeah, why the heck are we here? And then I just, <laughs> and it's just this spiral, but it's because it's misery loves company. Yeah. And it's, and it, I don't know, I don't, maybe not for you guys, cause you're an optimist, but for I me, am an optimist. I like, I, there's like this certain pleasure in sitting and hating on everything. It's just like, I guess all the haters on the internet, rather than being the one who's sticking your neck out, having fun doing it, right. but like taking the right. hit for it. Yeah. So anyways, I think just surrounding yourself with people that are just like, this is fun. It's yeah. hard work. Yeah. But let's do it. I think, yeah. yes, structures and, and systems, but setting goals that you're talking about, but being surrounded by the right people is so huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like foundational. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This has been good, guys. Um, I think uh, uh, we're going to continue this conversation in a, another podcast, moving in, into a little bit more about um, burnout, which I know is real. But in this, it, it, just to sum it up, you know, I really want listeners to walk away with something. Obviously, we've identified some problems. Uh, it's, it's me. I'm the problem. <laughs> it's me. Are you Taylor Swift? <laughs> it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. I love that song because it's made us so aware of ourselves. It's like, you know, you always like, it's always the other person. But when, when you think about it, how much of a problem you are, are actually in your own life. Um, <laughs> anyway, that was my point was like, yeah. I can point blame at everybody else yeah. asking for my time or I can just own the fact that Taylor's dropping the heat. That it's letting all us me. know it's yeah it's all me it's me um michael jackson tried it with man in the mirror i'm starting with the man in the mirror she <laughs> did go. it in a more fun way but yeah. um but it's true uh but uh, just to identify some uh, some solutions for some people as we as we close out i think obviously acknowledging you are the problem and then mm-hmm. figuring out the boundaries mm-hmm. the structures and then the um the um, ways to come out of the noise that uh, actually help you elevate into those things to move into the productivity, I think are very important. So for people listening, building healthy boundaries, um, identifying um, some structures. And then I like what you said, moving out of traditional 40 hour work, we can move into a little bit more task orientated if it's what you're doing project or tasks um, and giving yourself the freedom or, or the ability to move forward and then identifying the pillars that help you go for it, I think are real key. And the practices, like you talked about journaling, you just went out the other day and went skateboarding and just freed yourself to have a laugh. Um, I think it's super important. And I don't think we have necessarily a, a, a three point or five point step for people being more product productive, but I think there are solutions if you sit down and identify them for your own personal life. But that's the key. It is your life. Like, yeah. And I don't know, Jill, you could probably attest this, but like I've probably been the same as you, read countless books, listened to like endless numbers of conversations and podcasts. And I think at the end of the day, it's actually a lot simpler than we think. (laughs) It comes back and Scott, I think you're a great example of this in a lot of the work side of stuff, but it really just comes back to doing it. Doing it. You know, I think it's knowing it and then doing it, having the knowledge and then doing it. I think it's and not trying to say, oh, I there's like 10 different things I need to change. It's like, what's that one thing? You know, what's the you know, for me, it was sleep. And we'll probably talk about this Uh, in the next episode. No, but like huge that one thing Trent started changing everything. Right. right? Um, So I think it's yeah, find find those those things. Get really self-aware. Like I love I love what you said just with the. For those that aren't interested in the, Mm -hmm. I'm a handwriting journaling Mm -hmm. person, but like, I love that like voice memo example for those that. I think that's super cool. You know, I think not everyone wants to, has the capacity or or even the desire to sit down and write. Um, But being able to verbally process like that, I think is a really, um, yeah, empowering practice. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode. And thanks for joining the Socality Show. See you guys. See you guys. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit like and subscribe. You can enjoy the audio version of this podcast wherever you consume your podcast. We'll see you soon.